In this video, we're gonna learn how to quickly and easily edit your footage in Sony Vegas. And this is where Sony Vegas really shines. I think Sony Vegas is so fast and easy to use when it comes to editing video, much better than something like Camtasia. That's not a knock on Camtasia, it's just that this is what Sony Vegas is designed to do. So to start off with, I'm gonna go up and choose Project, New. No, I don't wanna save the project I have open right now. And as I stated in the previous videos, I want you to select HDV, 1280 by 720, 30p. And I'm gonna explain exactly why in just a few moments here. The other thing you wanna make sure you have is if you're in North America or Japan, that your video format is NTSC. Everywhere else in the world, you would select PAL. I'm gonna click OK. Okay, now what I wanna do is, remember I said before, what Vegas is gonna do is they're gonna put in some audio and video tracks for you. And this is confusing to people because they think they're somehow forced to add their media to the stuff that the tracks that Vegas has laid out for them. And because it's confusing, you don't have to do it, but I highly recommend that you highlight each track and just hit the delete key to get rid of it. So we're starting clean, starting fresh. Now I'm gonna add some media. I'm gonna go to Project Media, Add Media, and I will add a clip from my video training course. I'm gonna go back up. and I'm gonna add another clip and this one will be a screen recording like that. Okay, so now I'm ready to edit my video and all I have to do is grab one of these guys and pull it down here to the timeline. I can put it all the way here to the beginning. Vegas is gonna come up and say, hey, that clip you're adding, it's full HD. And it's a little bit different than your project settings. Do you want me to adjust your project settings to match the clip? I'm gonna say, no, I don't. Again, because I want those specific project settings at 1280 by 720. I'm gonna say no. And you see Vegas adds the clip. Up here is the video. This is the video track. This is the audio track. The audio track always has these squiggly lines. These are called waveforms that indicate sound in the video. And they're very, very helpful when we start to edit our video. Okay, so how do I jump around and play things in this video? Well, we can use these VCR controls up here where it's just the play button or the pause button or play from beginning self-explanatory, but usually it's gonna be much easier to simply use your keyboard. And to use your keyboard, you would do this. The first option is to use the space bar on your keyboard. When I hit the space bar, it starts right, playing. The big thing with DSLR cameras When I hit it again, it stops playing and returns to the original play point. Again, I hit space bar, it All starts right, the playing. the big thing with DSLR cameras space is... Space bar, it stops and returns to where it started. Alternatively, I can use the enter key or return key on my keyboard. When I hit that, it will start playing. All right, the big thing with DSLR cameras is When I hit the enter key again, it will stop, but it stays where it stopped. Okay, now this guy right here that you see moving, he's called the playhead. And what you can also do is you can grab him like this and simply scrub through the video. Or what you can do is just click the certain parts of your video and your playhead will jump to there. So if I wanted to start playing from right here, I would click there, and then I could hit the enter key Monsters. or the space They're bar. They're not, DSLR cameras are active. Now the next thing I wanna point out is this right here, and this is the time code for the video. And time with video works a little different than time in the real world. In the real world, we have you know 60 seconds per minute of video. But video works in frames, and let me demonstrate how this is gonna work. So I'm gonna hit my home key to go back to the beginning and I'm gonna hit the enter key to start playing and I want you to watch these numbers. Okay, I'm gonna stop it right there. 125, what does that mean? Does that mean one minute and 25 seconds? Does that mean one and a quarter seconds? No, that's actually almost two seconds. Okay, so if I go back to the beginning here and I start using my arrow keys to move across, as soon as I hit 30, that's gonna be one second of video. 30 frames equals one second of video. Boom. Okay? So if I go over here to 115, that means it's a second and a half of video. So you always have to remember that. 30 frames equals one second. So if you see 15 frames, that means it's a half second. So that's, that's how video works, and I just want to point that out to you. Now what we mostly do in editing is chop stuff out that we don't want, and this is where the waveforms, these squiggly lines come in real handy, because just by looking at this, I know where I probably need to cut stuff out. So if I go back to the beginning here, and I just drag this across, this is me preparing for the video, 
This is where I'm actually starting to speak. So I need to cut this stuff out. Okay, and in Vegas, we have several ways we can do that. You can simply go to the edge here, click and drag. And by the way, what Vegas is doing is called non-destructive editing. That means it's not changing the original video file whatsoever. It's just changing stuff in our timeline, but it's non-destructive, not affecting the original video file at all. Okay, so I'm going to do a control Z to undo that. That's one of the ways I can trim that and I can do it on this end as well. I could just pull that across like so. By the way, if I wanted to move this entire clip, I can just click and drag it to move it to a different spot. Okay, I'm going to undo everything again. The next way that we can do this is what's called splitting. And we see, you see we have these options down here. And the splitting will simply do this. If I click here, wherever this playhead is, it's gonna split this into two clips. And then I can highlight this clip that I don't need and just hit the, the delete key and it's gone. And then I could move this guy back over like that. I'll undo all of this. The split key, the split command is actually something you do a lot, but rather than clicking on this button, you can move your playhead where you want. Whoops. My playhead where I want. And then I can hit the S button, as in Sam, the S button on the keyboard, and it does the same thing. And that's a quicker way to do it. So we can split it like that. Another way we can do this is we have trim start and trim end. With the trim start, what this is going to do, wherever my playhead is, it's going to trim everything off from this point to the beginning of the video. For example, if I click it, boom, it trims that off for me. Or if I go over here and say this is where I want all of this stuff cut out, I can do trim end and it does it all for me. So it kind of just automates the split plus delete button. It kind of does it all for you. Okay, so I'll undo both of these and I'll pretend that I'm starting fresh, starting from the beginning, just starting to edit this video. I'll go to right here. All I'm right. just going to watch and listen in to say, okay, I want this video actually to start right here. So I'm going to go ahead and trim this one to the start, pull it over. And then what I'll do video is I'll watch time. this video so and listen in. Go. And maybe I want it to be right there where it stops. So I could split it. I could trim it to the end, or I can just grab this guy and pull it across like that. Okay. So the next thing I want to do is I want to add some more stuff. I want to add some screen recordings after I'm speaking in this video. And let me show you an effective way to do this. So I'm going to pull this down initially and whoa, okay, that's a long video. But what I notice is that if I play this and I'm watching my audio meters over here, which I'll talk more about in a moment every time. So here we go. Okay. I'm watching that. And then I watch the meters over here and the audio levels are way lower. So this clip has lower audio than this one. So what I'll do is I'll just delete it to get rid of, the, rid of it from the timeline and I'm going to expand this so you can see how I do this. Rather than pulling this, this clip down to the same video and audio track as this clip, rather than doing this where the audio levels are different, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it down below it like that. And the reason I do that is because now I will be able to adjust the audio levels separately. So as an example, if I had both of these guys on the same tracks and I adjusted the levels, it would adjust the levels for both of them. But by having them on different tracks like this, I can adjust the audio levels separately. The other thing I want to demonstrate when I do this is right now, if I play Vegas this, made quick, okay, it's my screen easy. capture footage that's in the screen. But the way things work in Sony Vegas, whatever is on top is going to be shown. So if I grab this clip and pull it over on top of the one below it, that's going to make the one below it invisible. And I'm only going to be able to see what I have on top. Okay, the final thing that I want to point out with editing is playback issues. So I'm going to get rid of this guy and I'm going to pull this down so we can see our preview screen a little bit better. A lot of times what will happen when people go to edit video people and they're watching stuff in the playback them, screen, it's not smooth like you're seeing here. DS Instead, maybe it's choppy or things seem out of sync. And that's simply because your computer doesn't have enough processing power to play everything back in real time. So what do you do in that instance? Well, I've already given you the first tip on what to do. And it's kind of an unknown secret that I shared with you. And that is those project settings. When we started a new project, 
I'm going to go into properties here to show you this. Remember, I insisted that you did 1280 by 720, regardless of the clip. And the reason I did that is because by setting it to these specific settings, again, this is a secret most people don't know, it actually improves playback. If you have playback problems, it can actually make playback smoother. That's why I say you do it. The next thing you can do if that hasn't helped is you can go above the preview window and right now I have it set to best full and that's the quality of the preview window. Now there's a number of options I could set it to. I could set it to draft half for example and you can see it gets real blocky but it will play back smooth so to speak. So that's the next thing you want to adjust and you probably don't want to go down to draft but you can go to preview auto where Vegas tries to kind of do it for you, you know, adjust everything for that you. People are and the quality that you get up here is still going to be a little bit monster. sketchy. They're not. Okay? But that's another thing that can help, but I always start out with best full cuz that's going to give me what the actual final image looks like and I only tweak it down if I'm having playback issues. The final thing that you can do in regards to this is you can go to options and it's running off your screen but there's the option for preferences. That's going to open up this little dialog and you can go to video and it's going to say how much RAM Vegas is using for this preview window. Right now it's using 200 megabytes, but I have way more available. So what I could do is I could increase this number and there's no magic formula to this. You just have to test. You might want to try doubling, tripling, and then quadrupling and see if it improves the video playback and Vegas still works as normal where it's not sluggish. Okay, so those are basically the, the three things that you can do to improve this video playback. Just keep in mind, if you are using uh, AVCHD video from a traditional video camera shoots in the AVCHD format, regardless of what you do, you're almost always going to have choppy playback. And the reason for that is that video format is not designed for editing. It's designed for shooting. So when you go to edit it, most computers, no matter how souped up they are, simply don't have the power to play that AVCHD footage back in real time. But those are the basics of editing your video. And now we'll go into some of the other things that you can tweak during the editing process.